Welcome to Nazarene Israel. I'm your host, Norman Willis, and this is our parasha for Yom Teruah 2022. And the new moon of the seventh Hebrew month for 2022, that's what starts all the feasts of the seventh month. It's expected to be seen on the evening of the 28th of August as the end of the first day of the week or Sunday night. Now, according to the ancient Hebrew wedding model, that means it's time for all of Yeshua's bride to make those last moment preparations to get ready for the bridegroom's arrival. It's time to prepare for our wedding day. Our bridegroom is coming for us tonight. Are we ready? Are we really ready? Yom Teruah Sameach, Happy Day of Trumpets. If you'd like to know more about Yom Teruah, the Day of Trumpets, please visit the Nazarene Israel website. We have years worth of study materials there, all for free. You can find Yom Teruah in the video series and transcripts for the Feasts of the Seventh Month. You can also find a written version in the Torah calendar study. And we would advise keeping all the materials we have downloaded because of the times we're entering into, if you know what we're saying. But in the ancient Hebrew wedding model, there are three phases. We saw that the first phase is the match, which is the Pesach, or Passover. Next comes the public announcement of that betrothal, which is at Shavuot, or Pentecost. And that's when the marriage becomes lawfully binding in Yahweh's sight, once it's announced. Now, once the wedding is announced, both the bride and the groom begin to prepare for the wedding. The bride now converses with the groom's best friend over the summer to learn what kinds of things he likes. And in our case, our husband's best friend is his spirit. So we're always supposed to be abiding in Yeshua's spirit, meaning we're supposed to be abiding in the vine, because apart from him, we can do nothing. He wants us to be in constant contact and communication with his spirit, and then listening and walking and talking constantly with Yeshua and his spirit each day constantly in contact with him through his spirit and this brings us back into contact with the father us in yeshua and yeshua and us him and the father and the father with him yeshua is our primary point of contact now the bride also works on her wedding dress because doesn't a bride want on the day of her wedding doesn't she want her husband just to be so glad that he chose her and she lays aside extra wicks and oil so that in case her bridegroom is delayed in his coming for whatever reason, she'll still have enough wicks and oil. In other words, the point is, she takes the wedding seriously. For his part, our husband's going to go back to his father's house where he's going to prepare a room for his bride to live with him. And at the end of the summer harvest and that happy abundance that arrives around that time, now the bridegroom is ready to come for his bride. So with his father's review and full approval, he sends a messenger ahead, announcing his coming with the shofar, announcing that the bridegroom will be coming to take his bride back to his father's house sometime that night, usually around midnight when things are the darkest, unless he's delayed. And we want that to be us, right? Like any bride, we should be preparing diligently for our wedding day, right? I mean, our wedding day is one of the most important days of any bride's life. What bride who loves her husband and who's looking forward to being together with him doesn't eagerly prepare for her wedding day so she can be pleasing to him on that day? Well, in the ancient Hebrew wedding model, our wedding day is symbolized by Yom Kippur, which takes place only 10 days following Yom Teruah. That's not a lot of time to prepare. Can we picture what a literal bride would be doing at this point in time? She hears the sound of the shofar announcing the bride will be coming for her tonight. Around midnight, she doesn't know what she's going to do. Isn't she going to be immersing herself? And then uh, she's going to be getting her hair done, uh, fixing her, her nails if she does that. Uh, wouldn't she be praying while she's getting her nails done? Wouldn't she be putting on her wedding dress and making sure everything is just exactly right? while she's trying to remember what her husband and his father like? Wouldn't she be making sure that everything is just perfect? And then just before the wedding, 
She's going to take one last look in the mirror just to make sure everything is in place. This should be us at Yom Teruah. That's the kind of introspection we need on the day of Yom Teruah. Why does she go through all the fuss? <laughs> because she wants to be the most pleasing thing her groom has ever seen. She wants to see that joy in his eye and to see the smile on his face. And he sees that she's all prepared. She has on her perfect, spotless, blemishless dress. She's wearing her spiritual ornaments. She wants to be the most pleasing thing he's ever laid his eyes upon. Well, now can we see ourselves as that bride? We've been eagerly waiting for our bridegroom to come for us for about 2,000 years now. And are we rehearsing for that special day when Yeshua is going to come for us? Because he's coming soon. We can see the signs and the times. We know the days of Matthew 24 are upon us. And after Matthew 24, he talks about the qualifications for the bride in Matthew 25. Three different parables. We talked about that last week. Are we preparing ourselves in every way possible to be everything Yeshua hopes we will be upon his return? He says, when the Son of Man returns, not will he find faith on the earth, but will he find the faith on the earth? Check our study on the case of the missing the. So as his bride, as our hopeful, waiting, expectant, are we checking all the details and making sure we got everything just correctly, the way he wants it? Our dress is pure white. There's no wrinkles, no stains. Okay, good. Now let's all take the bath. Let's take the ritual immersion. Let's take the spiritual bath and die to ourselves in our old way of life in our old father's house in the world. Or maybe we dwell with Babylon. Every person's different. But now let's wipe ourselves clean, wash ourselves clean inside and out, and get ready for our new life with our husband. Just like ritual immersion, let's make ourselves a blank slate. We can die to our old life, and now we can become a blank slate and we can hear and obey his voice and we can learn the new habits and the new traits that he and his father want us to have. And once we're clean, now let's deck ourselves with all our spiritual ornaments, you know, chastity, purity, faith. These things are pleasing to him. Well, as we put on our spiritual ornaments, now we're going to take that final look in the mirror before our groom sees us. And now we're asking our friends and our bridesmaids, please, to tell us in fellowship and in love, if there's anything out of order, anything we need to fix, that's what fellowship is all about. And that's what Yom Teruah is all about. It's the bride's warning to get ready that the bridegroom is coming tonight. And let's make sure that we've got plenty of oil and spare wicks in case our bridegroom gets delayed for any reason. So Yom Teruah means the bridegroom is on his way to come for us. And when he arrives, he, will he see that we were truly the wise virgins he wanted, who used our time wisely to prepare for our wedding day? Is everything done? Is everything all arranged just exactly the way he wanted? Or are we perhaps the foolish brides who are not prepared for the wedding? A king is under no obligation to take a queen if she's not right. Uh, that's a big misunderstanding in the John 3.16 community. Uh, if we are not completely 100% right and keeping the full bridal ketubah, um, the king's son is under no obligation to take us as his queen. Not if we deserve the death penalty for insubordination to his father. All right, what? Well, we're going we're gonna to marry, he's going to come and marry his bride so he can turn around and have to kill her for disobeying his father's commandments? No, uh, much, much better to put her away quietly so as not to make her a public example. See, I've heard that somewhere before, I'm not sure. So this year on Yom Teruah, as the day of our wedding on Yom Kippur approaches, let's take that one last final look in the mirror to see if we've got everything just exactly in keeping with his instructions. And brothers, sisters, if we're honest with ourselves and if we're humble and we see something that really isn't just exactly right according to what Yeshua wants in a queen, now is the time for us to take it to heart and fix it. 
because when the wise bridegroom king comes, then according to kingly standards, uh, he's only going to accept those wise virgins who valued their marriage to the king and took the time and took the pains to become completely ready for him, according to the Torah, shining his light and his testimony as darkness covers the earth. Maranatha, come quickly, Master Yeshua. Amen. <laughs>